way back in like November, I made a trip to my local Plaza Art Supply Store and I picked up these Marabou art crayons. Now, these are part of their mixed media line and these are water soluble, um, artist grade sort of crayons and they're in, um, it kind of reminds me of the Faber-Castell Gelato's packaging and none of these have been um, open. They're all individually shrink wrapped. So I'm going to open one on camera using a handy dandy exacto blade. Don't try this at home kiddos. Get your parents to help you out. Um, and then I'm going to open the rest off camera. But I thought we could take a look at these today. And I have recorded some reviews of other types of watercolor crayons. I do need to get those edited. And this is part of a big series on my blog, madosoup.blogspot.com, called Watercolor Basics. And I talk about several supplies on there. So you've got a textured grip, a plastic body that is the same or approximately the same color as the crayon inside, a clear plastic cap. And with these sort of things, I find that if I pull it off in haste, I end up hurting the crayon inside. So I want to be careful. So this will help protect your hands from getting dirty and you twist the collar to extend the crayon and it posts. So nice planning here, nice thinking here, uh, Marabou. And I would really love to review gelatos as well. Those are more of a crafter grade art supply, but I don't have any. So that is something I would be really interested in getting my hands on, hint, hint, favorite Castell. But these are purchased out of pocket for the purposes of review and to, you know, supply my own studio. All right, I have removed all of the packaging, which actually took a little minute. And that's a fair bit of packaging for individually wrapped products. So we're gonna go ahead and start swatching. So this is Genetian. Very, very, very soft. very much like a lipstick sort of consistency. Zoom in for you guys, actually. Next is aqua green. And these are some of the softer watercolor pencils I have taken, I'm sorry, um, watercolor crayons that I have reviewed. Not waxy at all. Oh, sorry, pomegranate. Flesh color. And if you watch this channel, you guys know I am not a fan of names like that. Terracotta. Mostly because we don't all have flesh that color. Most people don't, in fact. And then cocoa, or cacao, I guess, which is more like sepia. It's another thing I'm not a really big fan of is when we give um, sort of uh, more um, inspired by colored names than say accurate color names. Went ahead and lined them all up for comparison. The body color is fa whoa fairly true to what comes out of the tube, an exception definitely being uh, the pomegranate as well as the flesh color. The flesh color is a little more um, yellow than it is here. Terracotta is a little darker, but uh, cacao, which is really more of a sepia, is pretty spot on. So, since we're working on watercolor paper, let's do some water reactivity tests. Here is a synthetic brush and a cup of clean water. I'm just going to scrub it in. So, it does take a fair bit of scrubbing to activate the color, and then the color is a little bit anemic with a direct water application. Don't worry, we're gonna test this in a couple of different ways. I'm just going to do all of the colors on the palette like this. Although pomegranate activates fairly nicely. So even though I'm scrubbing and I'm scrubbing with a synthetic, oh wow, flesh doesn't leave any real color at all, which I know you guys are having a hard time seeing one way or the other. Um, See, terracotta is not doing so hot either. They all leave sort of a crayon imprint, so you're still gonna have your original mark. It's not going to blend out. And that is um, pretty common with waxy crayons or watercolor crayons. I was hoping these would have a higher pigment load. So I'm gonna give these a chance to dry. Actually, scratch that. I'm gonna take this opportunity to try and do some wet into wet. 
So that's pomegranate in this water from where, uh, from where we applied flesh. And as you can see, it's water, so it melts the crayon a bit. Now let's try another technique. Let's try applying water directly to our crayon like this. You can also use it to flick color into areas if you're using a synthetic brush. So, neat little trick. But yeah, even, even if we were treating it like we would a half pan or a tube, the color is very unimpressive. It's very faint, even working directly from the source. So that's kind of disappointing. Actually, it's pretty disappointing. Then we're going to use a little spritzer of water just to see how much they activate because this could be useful for some fun, say, card making techniques or even something a little more abstract in, say, your watercolor backgrounds. Wet into wet, you get a lot more movement. So when we applied the color into a pool of water and then spritzed it, we're getting more color movement. But pomegranate was also one of those colors that was pretty reactive unlike all of our other colors. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of movement. Some kind of cool effects, but these would not be my highest rated watercolor crayons. So I'm going to let these dry and then I'm gonna to try to reactivate them and we'll see if that works as well. All right, guys, so the Marabou watercolors have had a chance to dry. I'm going to try and reactivate them. And there's not too, too much color movement, even though I am scrubbing pretty hard. And since we've already sort of started working on this page, why don't we do some wet into wet scribbles? And then grab that spritzer bottle. So when you, during, when you are doing wet and wet, even if the paper is really saturated with these, there isn't necessarily a whole lot of movement. If you spritz them, I think the force of the water sort of pushes them a little bit, but they're still not too much bleeding or too much movement. So that was a fairly quick look at the Marabou Mixed Media Art Crayons. I hope you guys found this review slash overview helpful, useful. I hope you found it inspiring. If you have questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below and I will try to get those other watercolor crayon videos um, edited and up as soon as possible. For more great watercolor tutorials, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. This video is actually a part of that series. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this sort of content and I hope you'll consider subscribing. I do this sort of video, these sort of videos about twice a week, every week, sometimes more, but never less. And I hope you guys find them helpful, informative, um, maybe even inspiring and exciting. If you do, remember to leave me a thumbs up. I hope to see you guys again really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye.